Hello everyone, Elron here with part 91 of my Total Terraria World Annihilation. So back to the mathematics that I promised. Um, so right now I've got 78 more gig free. That's with a an hour worth of four screening. Um, and 40 minutes of uh, voiceover. And so basically we can now extrapolate a bit um, because at a rate of roughly 2 gig per hour and about a hundred meg um, per um, video of voiceover so uh, let's call 600 meg constant for these cohorts coming up which I guess means we'll just need to uh, add 200 to our grand total after we add the more video so let's see if we take our original estimate of um, two and a half hours, or I guess technically be, to be more precise, 2.4 hours um, of content in a single 10 minute video, um, and then multiply that by six. That will give us the total amount of um, time that in hours that we will be having recorded. And then we need to multiply that by 2 to give us um, the uh, gigage. And that actually comes up to 28.8 which seems reasonable because um, uh, this cohort's uh, raw video uh, gigage is 11.9 so uh, that all seems uh, within norms so it appears that I've freed up a lot of space um, compared to uh, when I was previously complaining about space issues. Um, so I should have more than enough space to both record a uh, nine screen cohort um, with a proper six video cohort and even have the space to render it. Um, I'll probably have trouble roaring directly uh, onto the solid state, so I might have to roar to the um, external. But um, I guess as long as the um, the rendering all takes place um, uh, locally, that's probably fine. But in any case, this is probably too much um, analysis of space and time and whatnot. So let's uh, move on to another topic. So it is now the following day. I did not get to finish voiceovering yesterday as I would have hoped to have been able to. The, my uh, Dark Souls buddy um, appeared on the scene a little too early for me to uh, finish the voiceovering, and we kind of went a bit too late for me to consider continuing the voiceovering after the fact. So um, that bled over to today. And today wasn't too great um, either. 
um, given the fact that um, there was a considerable amount of meat space uh, that I needed to do after work. Um, so I didn't get home until, sadly, roughly, when the um, when we stopped playing Dark Souls yesterday, but now I'm getting to that point where I feel like I desperately need to get this voiceovering done so that I can move on and actually give myself time to play Fallout tomorrow, because if I don't, you know, well, I guess, um, to put it one way, it's a good thing that I'm a schizophrenic already, because if I was normal, then the, the unnecessary waiting that I'm going through um, would essentially drive me insane. Um, but given the fact that I am insane, I'm kind of late for that. And it's not enough insanity to loop me around um, to the opposite pole. Uh, kind of like um, how computers do that. Uh, if you get to the absolute end point of what something can store, it would often loop from, you know, the positive maximum to the negative maximum, or vice versa. Because um, for some reason they like to loop and make it a nice big circle. But nope. Unfortunately, I am not fortunate enough to have that um, luxury. When I get to Infinity Insanity, I will be pegged at Infinity Insanity and will not be pushed over the edge to negative Infinity Insanity, which would essentially be the epitome of normality in a theoretical universe, which would still be statistically abnormal, which technically may not qualify for insanity, but it would certainly make myself an equally abnormal being, given the fact that every human deviates from the statistical norms um, on some level to some degree. Therefore, being too normal is considered to be abnormal because there's. It's basically just a statistical impossibility to have an individual be within, you know, the perfect mean um, for every attribute possible. Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, I am knowledgeable in the realm of psychology. Um, the way I see it, uh, know your enemy. And uh, one of my greatest enemies is my own mind. Therefore, understanding the human mind is key to understanding my greatest enemy. And so, as a little hobby of mine, in my late teens, early twenties, I went and um, extensively learned, you know, all that I could, barring, you know, graduate degrees and that kind of crazy stuff, um, and whatever I could. And really, after all that, aside from just knowing some interesting statistics here and there, um, Mainly, I just know that I will not be cured in my lifetime, and I've learned to just mask it better um, when I feel necessary for it to be masked. Well, that about does it for this video. I will see you next video.